Yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer in, first of all, right, um, the way to get uh, new zero to one technology to work well uh, and to integrate it into society is just you, you have to deploy early. Um, we have to like build in the public and also most of all, I think robots, they need to live and learn among us. We want them to be very aware of these nuances of human life, right? Like um, holding, holding the door open for grandma and being polite and generally behaving in a manner that can increase our quality of life. All right, Bert, listen, you, you've got Neo Gamma or a Neo Gamma standing by just a couple of inches away from you, right? Uh, can you there. bring him, her, it in and show us, give us an example of what it can do? Ah, ooh. Well, okay, pass me a bottle, bottle of water. water. That's pretty good. Did, did, um, did, you ask, did you ask for that or how did it know to do that for you? So uh, right now, um, this was actually done by someone remote teleoperating the robot. Um, there's a mix. Uh, I could ask for it to autonomously give me a bottle. It's pretty good at that. Um, increasingly, it can do more and more of these tasks by itself. And it's also a great conversation partner. I think the companionship in having these robots at home is going to be a large part of the product. Um, I mean, we're starting to talk a lot to these AI models. The voice models are getting very good. Um, but there is something special about having an embodiment, right? Having the body language, knowing who's talking to you, being able to s look at you, to see who is talking, directional audio, all of these things. So um, the way I would describe this, like currently the product operates really in two modes. It's the best effort autonomy, where you talk to the robot and ask it to do things. And it's getting pretty good at some cool things. Like uh, it can open the door. So usually if someone comes over, I'll say like, hey, Neo, can you get the door? The robot goes over, it opens the door, lets people in, says hi to them. Maybe if there's someone coming over with some, uh, with like takeaway dinner or whatever, that's especially fun. Uh, always see like the face of the driver when they're delivering something to the humanoid for the first time. Okay. Um, and then whenever I'm like, typically for me when I'm at work, I just schedule the robot to do all of my household chores. And then when I come home, it's like, it's tidied, it's vacuumed, it's cleaned a bit, done some of the laundry, maybe unpacked some food in the fridge if it got delivered on the door. And in general, freeing me from having to use those valuable hours when I finally come home from work, right, to do the household chores. And wow. a lot of that happens, a lot of that happens through teleoperation, where not necessarily someone directly like pretending to be the robot, more like a high level guidance system, but like uh, where there's a human in the loop, kind of like early for self-driving cars, right? Where there are par for parts of the task, there are people in the loop to help teach the robot how to do this. Um, but for me as a customer, I don't really care, right? Because I I'm not there and I come home and the house is tidy and everything is good. Uh, now, increasingly as we do this, these tasks get added to the autonomy so that I can ask the robot to also do this while I'm there. And uh, hopefully it does it in a good manner. Uh, if not, I'm just going to tell it that I don't think you did a good job. No, yeah. can you try again? And, yeah, and Bert, the movements that we just saw in Neo Gamma looked very, I don't know, to me it looked very smooth. That was pretty quick. It wasn't clunky in any way. But still, at the moment, relying on teleoperators. So... I don't know if I feel comfortable with that, at least in the beginning. So that's number one. And number two, when do you think you will actually get to that autonomous moment? Uh, Bert, just sure. let, let me quickly uh, jump in. You know, this whole uh, thing about teleoperators, right? This is a human, I don't know, it could be miles or, 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 or kilometers away, I don't know, uh, watching what's going on in your home through Neo Gamma sensors, uh, vision, uh, I don't know what else we have, temperature, uh, smell, et cetera, and then figuring out what to do and how to navigate and operate, right? What about, and I referenced this, right? And I was joking about how, you know, people who were, like to run around at home naked might want to think twice about letting Neo Gamma into your house, right? What, what about privacy, though? This is going to be a huge issue if, if teleoperators yeah. are involved. I think it's all about like transparency and like there's no way we can make this product really good for you without a lot of your data. But we want to be want this to be your data on your terms, right? And just be very transparent about what we see, what we don't see. And first of all, I think it's incredibly important that for most of the time when you're home, the robot runs autonomously so that there is no 
no one seeing through the robot. And there is no one at One X that can see that data, even when we're training on it. So the data goes into the training model, but no human ever sees that data. And if we, for some reason, want to see some parts of that data to figure out what happened or something like that, we have to send you a request on your phone, ask you for permission, you get to see what actually happened, and then you can approve if you want us to be able to actually decrypt the data and look at that data. So we take the privacy part of that extremely seriously. Um, now, when it comes to the teleoperation part, I see this ex uh, as inviting someone into your house. So we never do teleoperation without you approving it. So if for some reason the robot is not able to do some task, and you really want this task mm -hmm. done now, and you ask if the robot can have a teleoperator do it, then the robot will prompt you with like, hey, I don't know, can, can Kevin take over and do this task? And if you say yes, mm. you can log on to the robot, the lighting on the robot changes, and in general, it's very visible that like someone is inside the robot now, and then uh, does the task and logs off. And again, like the lighting and everything changes. So I don't see this as, I don't see this as so much of a barrier as a lot of people think. And I live with the robot every day, so I have okay. one at home. So I'm first-hand experience here. Because it's just about being extremely clear about how do you invite someone in, right? It's like, it's like someone knocking on your door to help you. But it's actually incredibly okay. useful. Because even though you would like, I mean, I would really like to have someone in my house to help me do a lot of the things so I don't have to while I'm... While I'm uh, working hard and all these kind of things, right? But what is really hard is to have someone come and help you with micro tasks. So if I want something done that takes 10 minutes, I'm not gonna have like some yeah. person, rent some person to drive over to help me for 10 minutes. But with the robot, I can actually just get someone like in two seconds to come and help me with something. But again, like I said initially, right? This is not for everyone. This is very much for early adopters that wants to be part of this. And there's a long queue of people who want to do this. Um, I'm one of them myself. I think it's incredible. And I look forward to every day when I get to get up and like talk to my robot. I have finally have a robot at home. Uh, it's absolutely magical. Yeah. And the, the autonomy will get Birds. there. But thinking about full autonomy, where like there's no human in the loop at all, I think that's probably closer to 2027.